B scan screening with Quantel ultrasound systems. In this brief video, we'll review the fundamentals of performing B scans using ultrasound equipment from Quantel Medical. We will discuss and demonstrate preparation of the room and equipment and the fundamentals of performing a great exam. Let's get started. Ideally, the examination room should be equipped with a fully reclining chair or bed for the patient, an adjustable height movable cart, and a seat for the examiner. The examiner should be able to place the machine as close to the patient's eyes as possible. The cart should contain these supplies, anesthetic drops, a coupling agent such as methyl cellulose or gentile, tissue, gloves, and eyewash supplies. It is important to ensure that the patient is comfortable, calm, and cooperative in order to give them a safe and positive experience and to perform a good exam. To this end, it is helpful to review the procedure with the patient before beginning. Introduce yourself and tell the patient how long the procedure is expected to take. Show them the equipment. Explain that you will be using a probe that emits ultrasound waves and that they should not feel any pain or discomfort during the procedure. However, they may feel the cool, sticky sensation of the gel. Advise them to relax and keep their head still throughout the exam. Let them know that you will be asking them to look up and down and left and right, moving their eyes but not their head, and make sure they know to speak up if they need to for any reason. Lastly, ask if they have any questions before you begin and address any concerns. It is important to pay close attention to the orientation of the probe since that dictates the orientation on the screen. This white mark on the side of the probe corresponds to the upper portion of the B-scanned echogram appearing on the monitor. Note that the center of the sound beam gives the most detailed images. An anesthetic drop is applied to the ocular surface. Sometimes it is useful to anesthetize both eyes in case the examiner wishes to compare one to the other. Ophthalmic gel is used as a coupling agent in order to create an air-free interface between the eye and the probe. The procedure is generally performed on the open eye with the probe placed directly on the globe. This allows the technician to observe and control the patient's gaze during the procedure and avoids sound absorption by the lids. If enough gel is used, it should not be necessary to put too much pressure on the globe. Throughout the procedure, the examiner should be attentive to the patient's behavior. If the patient is wiggling, squeezing, or hanging onto the chair tightly, they may be uncomfortable. Although it's ideal to perform the exam on an open eye, there are instances when performing it through the lids is recommended. If the patient is within a week of ocular surgery, has an infection or a potentially opened globe, or if they just cannot tolerate the probe on the eye. We will demonstrate the techniques for capturing four different types of images. Performing the examination in a systematic way and doing so routinely with each patient allows the examiner to obtain the most useful information. We will discuss the selection and sequence of screening momentarily, but for now, let's get a feel for each probe position. For each of these, attending to the location of the marker and understanding the direction of the sound beam are key to obtaining good images. When doing contact B scans, the probe is always placed opposite the area to be examined, and the patient's fixation should be away from the probe. For transverse scans, the sound beam is aligned perpendicular to the fundus. The transducer housed within the probe moves back and forth toward the marker. The examiner should always localize the shadow of the optic nerve first. This indicates that the sound beam is aimed posteriorly. To evaluate the superior and inferior fundus, the marker is directed toward the nose. These scans are horizontal transverse or cross-sectional scans because the sound is moving left to right. To evaluate the nasal or temporal fundus, the marker is directed superiorly. These scans are considered to be vertical transverse scans because the sound is moving up and down. With transverse scans, the sound is being directed between six clock hours. Keep in mind that the slice of tissue being imaged at any point is only about two millimeters in diameter. Therefore, it's necessary to gently shift the probe from the limbus, sound beam aimed at the posterior pole, to the fornix, sound beam aimed toward the periphery, in order to screen the entire quadrant. Images should be labeled according to the clock hour that is in the center of the screen and location along the clock hour. P is posterior, near the optic nerve. PE is posterior to the equator. E is near the equator. EA is anterior to the equator. O is aura, and CB is ciliary body. The location is subjective to the examiner and based on the position of the probe face on the eye. Keeping in mind that the center of the sound beam provides the best detail, an oblique transverse scan is used to center pathology located in the suprotemporal, 
supranasal, infranasal, or infrotemporal quadrants. This is performed in the same manner as the transverse scan, only the marker on the probe is positioned upward at an angle. If the area of interest is located supranasally or infrotemporally, the marker should be directed supranasally. If the area of interest is located supranasally or infranasally, the marker should be directed supranasally. As with all transverse scans, images should be labeled by clock hour and location along the clock hour. In order to recreate the three dimensions of the globe using two-dimensional slices, we must direct the sound from different angles. We've already employed transverse scans for cross-sectional views of the eye structures. Now, we can use longitudinal scans to evaluate those same structures in radial views. To perform a longitudinal scan, the sound beam is aligned parallel to the fundus, and the marker is directed along the corneal limbus opposite the area being examined. A simple way to think about longitudinal scans is to think about a bicycle wheel. The center of the wheel is the optic nerve, and the spokes extending from the center to the tire are the radial cuts. This position allows an examiner to image a single clock hour from the posterior pole to the periphery. In longitudinal echograms, the shadow of the optic nerve appears at the bottom of the screen. The top of the screen now represents the most anterior portion of that particular clock hour. Label longitudinal images with an L and the clock hour being examined. An axial scan directs the sound beam from front to back and so allows imaging of the lens and optic nerve. The patient should be looking in primary gaze as the probe is placed gently on the cornea. Use copious amounts of gel to cushion the face of the probe on the cornea and avoid moving the probe too much to limit the risk of corneal abrasion. There are three directions of axial scan. One, a vertical axial scan is performed with the marker in the superior position. Two, a horizontal axial scan has the marker in the nasal position. And three, an oblique axial scan has the marker up but at an angle. For a majority of patients, transverse and longitudinal scans will supply the needed images. The recommended sequence for scanning is as follows. First, perform transverse scans in all quadrants, beginning with the superior fundus, then nasal, inferior, and temporal. Remember that with the mnemonic, SNIT. Remember to shift the probe from the limbus to the fornix, making sure the face of the probe stays in contact with the globe and rotating the back of the probe downwards. Then, perform longitudinal scans in any clock hour. When looking at an essentially normal globe, it is generally sufficient to do a longitudinal toward nasal scan to get a good look at the optic disc and a longitudinal toward temporal scan to evaluate the macular region. Use oblique transverse scans as needed to center areas of interest. Use axial scans only as needed to view the lens and optic nerve. When findings are normal, taking and storing one transverse scan and one longitudinal scan is generally adequate. When there are abnormal findings, be sure to take the appropriate additional transverse and longitudinal scans in order to document the pathology. Once all of the images have been obtained, rinse the examined eye with eye wash and remind the patient to avoid the urge to rub the eye. Thoroughly clean the area and the equipment according to the health and safety standards required by your clinic. Inform the patient of next steps regarding review and reporting of their ultrasound findings. To recap, in this presentation we discussed preparing the room and equipment, counseling the patient, preparing the ocular surface, the orientation and use of the probe, four techniques for imaging different sections of the globe, the recommended sequence and selection of scans, and finally, how to wrap up the session. Quantel Medical's exemplary ultrasound technology has brought multiple innovations to ultrasound specialists worldwide since 1993. We hope you found this demonstration of compact touch helpful. For more information about this technology and Quantel's complete range of diagnostic ultrasound products, please visit www.quantel-medical.com.